the ideal gas law provides us with a new tool in the stoichiometry toolbox. We can calculate, for example, a volume from a number of moles or a pressure from a number of moles or use pressure, volume, and temperature to calculate a number of moles. Since moles appear in the ideal gas law, it's a new tool in the stoichiometry toolbox. To demonstrate this, I want to work this example problem, simply asking what is the density of molecular nitrogen gas, which is N2 gas, at standard temperature and pressure. Let's diagram out the process as we do with stoichiometry problems before we dig in. Density is mass divided by volume. And to start this calculation off, we can assume that we have some volume of N2 gas around. We're going to need to do that to make progress. Knowing the temperature and the pressure, which we do because STP, we can determine the number of moles of nitrogen gas we're dealing with there. And then using the molar mass of N2, we can go from that number of moles to the mass. So we assumed the volume, we worked our way to the mass of that volume, and setting up a ratio of the mass divided by the volume will give us the density. So now let's dig in and practice this. N2 gas, that's got a certain molar mass, 28 grams per mole approximately. And STP tells us the temperature and pressure, one atmosphere and 273.15 Kelvin. Now, let's assume that we have one liter of gas inside some container. The number of moles of that gas is the pressure times the volume divided by R times the temperature, where I'm using this form of R, these units of R, so that moles pop out and I can use the volume in liters and the pressure in atmospheres. So one liter times one atmosphere is highly convenient. Divided by that temperature times the ideal gas constant gives us a number of moles of 0 0.0446. Now, the mass corresponding to that number of moles is simply that number of moles times the molar mass of N2, 28.01 grams per mole. That comes out to 1.25 grams. But we assumed one liter of N2 gas, and so the density is 1.25 grams divided by one liter, or 1.25 grams per liter. So notice that the ideal gas law was used as a key tool in the stoichiometry toolbox to calculate a number of moles from the known pressure, volume, and temperature. Pressure and temperature came from STP, and the volume came from our assumption of one liter of volume of gas. Here we're asked to determine the molecular formula of cyclopropane which is a gas, and we're first given mass percentage information that suggests that a way forward is to first determine the empirical formula of this compound. We're going to find that first, and then we're going to deduce the molecular formula from this information, which is ideal gas law related information that allows us to infer the number of moles we're dealing with. So first, let's turn the clock back and use these mass percentages in the compound to determine its, its empirical formula. So what I'm gonna do is assume I have 100 grams of material, find the number of moles of carbon, there it is, just by dividing by the molar mass of carbon, and find the number of moles of hydrogen simply by dividing by the molar mass of hydrogen, and these are the numbers that pop out. If I compare these numbers of moles in the compound, I'll realize that the empirical formula is CH2, two moles of H for every one mole of C, and this corresponds to a molar mass of 14 grams per mole. That's going to be useful later. That may not be the molar mass or molecular mass, we might say, of the compound itself, because the compound could be C2H4, C3H6, C4H8, C5H10, etc. So to proceed, what we really want to know is what is the molar mass of the compound itself? And in other words, in this 1.56 grams of material that we're dealing with, what number of moles am I dealing with there? I can use the ideal gas law combined with this information, a volume, a pressure, and a temperature, to calculate that number of moles. That's how we're going to finish the problem off. The number of moles is PV divided by RT. And when I plug in the numbers, and when I plug in the numbers from the problem, 0.984 atmospheres, one liter, and 323.15 Kelvin, that's 50 degrees C converted to Kelvin, I arrive at 0.0371 moles. That goes into the denominator of this molar mass, and the result is 42 grams per mole. Let's compare the molar mass of CH2 with the molar mass of 42 grams per mole that we just deduced. 
This is three times the molar mass of CH2. So we're going to take that CH2 and multiply by three to get the molecular formula C3H6. This helps us see how the ideal gas law can be used as a stoichiometric tool to calculate number of moles when we know all of those gas variables except for moles.